Get him. You better move. You better. Ah, this motherfucker chasing the court. Big. Yes. Ah. It starts off in 1982, Bobby Johnson just getting out of jail and all his gang friends outside waiting to pick him up. They all happy and celebrating and shit. It's a happy gang movie. Hey, awesome. Come here. I just wanted to say I'm sorry. Ah! Bobby Johnson is like the co-leader of this local gang called Deuce, Hoover Deuce. His partner is Ray Ray and they best friends or something. Apparently Ray Ray's dad and Bobby Johnson's dad started the gang back in the day with just the two of them. That's why it's called Deuce. How the hell do you have a two-person gang though? That's not really a gang. That's just two niggas being friends. <laughs> they take Bobby Johnson home and he meets back up with his baby mom. She a sherm head and she kind of don't care about him or the baby. It's not cool. Why don't you tell me Bobby was getting out? Shit, everybody knew, Kyle. You stink. You hiding that PCP shit? Jeannie, this is Bobby. Glad to meet you, Bobby. Glad in your motherfucking oh, ass, cuz. Bobby Johnson girl is messing around with this very evil looking pimp vampire nigga that live in their apartments. He be giving her sherm and she be sucking him off or something. I don't know the exact exchange. They never say. She doing something though. You know there ain't no positive black females in these movies. Nothing. Smack man. We don't like your shit in our hood man. We gotta weed out the independence man. Make our neighborhood safe for our kids and our bitches. Yeah. I was alone Bobby. I didn't have no money. No car, no nothing. I had the baby by myself, Bobby. By myself. Bobby Johnson goes to a deuce meeting. His friend Ray Ray talks about how they about to take over and how they about to sell a bunch of crack to the community. Bobby Johnson kind of don't like it, but he don't say shit. Also, weird observation. None of these niggas have facial hair. Like, the whole gang and shit. Is that like a requirement and shit? I mean, this is kind of a flashback. They supposed to be young and shit, so it makes sense. It's just weird to me. Like, clearly this nigga Ray Ray is 38 years old. Now, in 1972, Deuce started out with two members. Now they're hundreds. Control your hood. Bro, I'm really about to get your pickle chin that boy. They go to celebrate at this fucking spooky looking club. It's like underground or some shit. It's got like that weird 90s fog in the air, like all the music videos and shit. The club is actually owned by the vampire nigga, which makes perfect sense actually. They came here on purpose, trying to intimidate him or something. I don't know. I don't know why they came here. This shit's spooky. You guys got IDs. Most of you look a little too young to party. You got ID in your face, motherfucker. Cool. Wow. Where's the ambulance? Where's the ambulance? <laughs> they have a good time at the party or whatever. They send the girls home so they can have another deuce meeting. Let's send the bitches home, man. Send the bitches away, the bitches go play with somebody else. Now what the fuck is that supposed to mean? Come on, man. Yeah, she wasn't joking either. She really go to see that vampire nigga. Like, bro, you in a gang. You can't be out here getting openly cheated on, bro. That's not gangster. We'll see your mama in a minute. Come on. Yourself. You heard what the man said, motherfucker. <laughs> what is that? It's the big bad boy, Bobby. Smack. You don't fuck with me. You don't fuck with Genie Lamp. Do you understand me? You feeling good? You know, it's always over a fucking girl, bro. Niggas will kill each other over girls in real life. Like, weak ass bitches, too. They don't even be bad. Then again, this nigga Bobby Johnson probably got limited options himself. I mean, he in a gang, so that's a few cool points, but that's it. Like, this nigga don't be getting money. This nigga be fucking... No hang time, motherfucking shovel face, flat face. Bobby Johnson and his crew go to get revenge on the vampire nigga pretty easily too. This nigga didn't get no extra security or nothing. He legit don't take these niggas seriously. What's a cap in that motherfucker? I mean, I swear to God, I never touched your woman, man. I don't deserve this.
Um, why the fuck does everybody look so shocked? They came here to do exactly this, right? Like, these niggas about to cry and shit. I mean, I think it's their first kill as a gang or something. I know it's Bobby Johnson's first kill, at least. Still seems like melodrama, though. These niggas recruited hundreds of people into a gang. You'd think they'd be more ready for gang shit. You OG now, man. Now you get your heart. Who body? This deuce. Bobby Johnson's riding around with the homies. This homie named Bear, he that one nigga from Boys in the Hood. The other homie is like hyperactive or weird or something. He being weird. He doing like a fake Chris Tucker, Martin Lawrence, Brandon T. Jackson thing. It's pretty annoying. Damn, look at that bitch. Damn, she a hustler? He cool, me, no go. Relax, Bobby, man, it's only a fine ass bitch. Damn. They stop and holler at this prostitute who is obviously a cop. She not even doing a good job. She look regular as fuck. You supposed to make yourself look strung out or something a little bit, right? Why would this normal white lady be selling pussy in South Central? These niggas dumb, and also, that's bad police work. You bad boys kill anybody? Yeah, hey, you know we're down for that 187, baby. How much you trying to go for the kitty cat, huh? <laughs> Cause I got the rock. Say, mama, how much this party gonna cost? Nothing, baby, it's on the state. LAPD, pull over. What the fuck? Chris Tucker Lawrence T. Jackson pulls out some crack and confesses to hella crimes all within a few seconds. This is the easiest thing of all time. What the? This nigga trying to impress a prostitute? Come on, bro. Also, it probably sucks for this other fake prostitute. Everybody ignoring her and shit. Like, she over here trying to pose a little bit. Nobody give a fuck. I got your fingerprints all over that gun, Bobby. You want to talk to me now? The cops tell Bobby Johnson they got his fingerprints on that gun that killed the vampire nigga. Genie Lamp, this nigga named Genie Lamp, cuz. It's weird that these deuce niggas are smart enough to lure hundreds of people into their gang shit, but dumb enough to leave behind a weapon with fingerprints? Dumb enough to not wear gloves? Dumb enough to get caught by this obvious ass fake hooker? Like, these niggas be having whole meetings and shit. Nobody ever said wear gloves? Look, you give me some names. Give them to me right now and I'll cut you a soft deal. OG Bobby Johnson goes to jail and he gets super buff and shit. He took them shitty ass braids out his head. He got like a cruddy now. He look like Jamie Foxx a little bit. He looking pretty handsome, bro. Pause. I'm sorry, he not handsome. OG Baby Johnson grows up too and he's a deuce now. He be stealing car radios and shit and bringing them to Ray Ray. His mom's still a sherm head and shit. It's very sad. Sad gang movie. This nigga has a random patch in the back oh of his God. shit. What is that for? I refuse to believe that shit ever looked cool. Nigga left one pixel of hair on the back of this kid neck. Who the fuck did that shit? Chris Tucker Lawrence T. Jackson ends up getting locked up too, and he getting harassed by some neo-Nazi guys. This brother is Hoover Deuce, motherfucker. Straight like that. This punk owes my brothers in D-Block eight boxes smoke. Fuck these homos. Arians don't want nothing with the Deuce. This punk owe us. You take him, Bastille. I'm dead on you. You gonna owe Arians. Ten bucks. Why is he talking like that? This nigga sound like he in a fucking school play or something. It sounds very unnatural. I noticed that shit with Ray Ray too. He be like, listen here, young player. It's time to jump you in on the set. Like, these niggas are obviously acting. I mean, I know everybody's acting, but they like Shakespeare acting. Chris Tucker tells Bobby Johnson that Ray Ray took over the hood and is evil now or something. Ray Ray don't give a rap but about no hood. Hell, Ray Ray got your boy out there still in stereo. What? Baby Johnson gets shot, and it's kinda hard to watch, man. This shit really is sad. OG Bobby Johnson hears about what happened to his son, and now he fucking still in jail. There's nothing he can do. Really think about that shit, though. That shit probably sucks. There's nothing you can do but worry. Plus, his girl don't ever come see him, so he barely even get updates and shit. He hasn't even seen this nigga since he was a baby. That's really how it be. That's fucking sad. A hood movie. Let me be that still. You need your homeboys. Just leave me alone, man. I need some time to think. You saying you want out? No, nah, man. Look, just leave me alone. You want to be on your own? You got it, fool. Got to go, Bobby. Can't be alone in here. 
nigga is being super unreasonable right now. Like, why can't you just leave this man alone for a second? His damn kid just got shot. You want to hang out so bad? You need your homeboys. The jail deuces stopped fucking with Bobby Johnson, and now he on his own and is dangerous. That's super petty, by the way. It was legit some high school female shit the way it happened. I really don't understand how this very high-ranking nigga got kicked out so fast. Anyway, baby Johnson in the hospital now. He getting taken care of by this wholesome-ass, lovable-ass nurse lady. She really nice to him, and she treats him like a little kid, which... That's all this nigga really needed in the first place. You'd be surprised how many hood niggas just want to be loved. What? You never played ping pong? That's honky ball. I ain't play no honky ball. Oh, you motherfucker! You motherfucker! Speaking of wholesome ass people, there's this Muslim nigga that's been watching Bobby Johnson. He thinks he's smart and has potential. If you are mine. You can't do but one of three things. You can kill your enemy and wind up on death row. You can turn it in on yourself and go crazy. You can change. The neo-Nazi dude rolls up on Bobby Johnson and he say 15 box cigarette again. He's still saying it weird. It's still pretty funny. It's a good scene. Oh, and Bobby Johnson in danger. You're here because you are now my property. Deuce paid their debt with him. We all know Bobby here, a man. He a man. How many cigarettes? Bucks. The Muslim nigga tells Bobby Johnson that he gotta read a bunch of books and get smart to pay off his debt. They start liking each other and shit and bonding and Muslim. You getting a like hunky ball just a little, huh? All healed up. Jimmy, these people are here to help you. They're gonna help you have a better life. You understand what I'm saying? Jimmy, these people are here to help you. They're gonna line you up, take you to a barber shop. You have a better life. Speaking of which, this nigga's been in the hospital for months, right? It was long enough for his damn back to heal completely. How is this patch still here? Who is cutting his shit like this every week? I'm gonna miss you most of all, Nurse Shelley. I got pretty good at honky ball, didn't I? <laughs> you sure did, honey. You know there ain't no positive black females in these movies. Fucking playing with me, bitch. I'm not fucking playing with Bobby Johnson is fully reformed now. He's smart now and he shaves and gets his tattoo removed. He mushes down his cruddy into this sort of condensed airtight bush. It's com like tightly compressed to his head. He didn't pick it out at all and shit. Nigga look like a microphone. You got parole. I got parole. Congratulations. Thank you very much. You got your second chance. <sighs> Bobby Johnson goes home and reunites with his girl. Shockingly, they still live in the same place. That's kind of impressive for a sherm head. It's been like 10 years now. How is she paying for this shit? Never mind. Don't answer that. Baby, I didn't know you Carol, was Carol out. what is this? Okay. This says they took Jimmy away. Why? Bobby Johnson want to go get his son back so they can both be happy and go to the barbershop. His son ends up in one of those fucking shitty ass group homes and shit with all these other savage ass kids. You know, the acting in this shit is a little shaky, but for the most part, this shit is pretty accurate. It's hella kids out here like this, living a fucking nightmare, getting shot and just thinking that's how shit is in the fucking United States of America. Keep it short. So what up? It's me, Jimmy. Bobby Johnson. It's your daddy. When I get out, we can run down on that Buster Willie Manchester. We can do it tonight. Go find that nigga and spray his butt. Where your black heart at? I took it off. Oh my God. Baby Johnson upset because his dad turned to a hoe ass nigga. He ends up running away from the group home and now Bobby Johnson got to find him. Me and you guys know Jimmy Johnson? Who wants to know? I'm his daddy. You got an ID you can prove that? Got an ID in your face, motherfucker. Come on. I'm OG Bobby Johnson. Your killer Bobby Johnson? You J-Rock daddy? You gonna ride down on Willie Manchester? Of course I am, but I need J-Rock. You know where he is? He at Ray Ray's storehouse on Crenshaw and Hope Street. I'm looking for my boy, Ray Ray. You seen him? What you do, man? It's cool. Now the deuce is 50,000 strong all across LA now, Bobby. I owe you. Jimmy. I ain't going back there. Deucin got me 10 years in prison, Jimmy. And it got you shot. It's wrong. You can see that. Now fuck that. I love you. 
I want you back with me. Dudes take care of their own, Jay. Yeah, like you took care of Loco. <laughs> That was an accident. I was protecting my family. Stop bitching. He's all yours. Jimmy! Stay out of this, Bobby. Jimmy, put the gun down. There's nothing to it. No! If you hit a man in his face, in time, his wounds will heal. But if you kill, there is no later on. All I want is to give him Something that you or I never had. A father. Ray Ray lets them go and everybody happy now. It really is a happy hood movie. You know something? The acting was kind of garbage and fucking... 15 box cigarette, but this was a good ass movie. You kind of got to look at it like a dramatized version of a real story because all this shit is real ass everyday shit that happens. Despite what it seems, this really is a happy hood movie, if you think about it. Like this little kid could have died from that shotgun blast and that would have been it. Or what if this nigga OG Bobby Johnson never even got parole? Or like, what if the neo-Nazis killed him and shit? You know what I'm saying? It's like one of those against all odds type stories where the nigga against all odds. It's an inspirational movie. If Bobby Johnson can change, I can change. Speaking of which, the nigga who plays Bobby Johnson was super good. This nigga low-key carried the whole movie by himself. The girlfriend was pretty good. She gave a good performance. Nurse Shelly was fucking amazing. She's such a sweet lady. She probably smell real good and shit. She probably cook real good and shit. Everyone else fucking annoyed the shit out of me. Actually, the kid. I didn't hate the kid, but I legit hated everybody else. I hated Ray Ray. This nigga never felt like a gangster. This nigga remind me of Braxton from Jamie Foxx show. The Patch does a good performance also. I really believe there was a real patch there was times i legit forgot it was computer effects it's not real nobody would do that to a kid it's just special effects y'all thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe and give me some money somehow i want to be a youtube for full time i want to go to the strip club all the time see you next time for all the hood stories rest in peace genie lamp rest in peace ray ray this nigga ain't dead only one nigga died this whole movie <laughs>